Hi folks, uh, a woody scene tutorial I think, so when I was looking back over my previous work, I just wiped the edge of my tray, the bow numbers have gone everywhere and it's getting on my hands and on my jeans, okay, that should be alright, alright, so I've got a bit of uh, the winds renewed some paper here. Uh, I'll give it a wet. It's quite porous. I'm just using up the stock of it. I had, there's no more. It's 90 pound weight. Very, very good paper for, for the price. But I can't get more of it until more of it becomes available. I think it was just a, a, a job lot and uh, Ken Bromley got hold of it. Knocked it out cheap, real bought it, and now there's none left. Right, okay, so a bit of sky, so a bit of raw sienna in the sky. Just a, a faint blush. I'll centre the lines, and I want a bit of a path through the, through the middle of that, I think. Well, not exactly the middle. I don't know if that's going to show up on the screen for the moment. It just the, the the picture is a little bit on the yellow side because of my spotlights and they're very oh what happened there? We don't want that. I've taken a photograph of what I found to be the ideal. I don't want it too too colourful. Now look, I've got more. Burnt number of your finger. I know why. I, I squeezed out the ends, of, end end of the tube, and it it just went up the side of the inside side of inside of the tray. So let's just take that off. Oh, pardon my story about this. No, I'll just show you what I'm doing. Up, it's gone all over the place there. So I'm, and that's where I grip it. So. If you don't use one of these trays, you're using the fancy compartmentalised. This is a, a domestic, like a catering tray. Very, very good. I got, I get mine from Macro. This is a UK. But they're, they're food trays. They come, they're only about two or three pounds each. So very inexpensive, very, very good quality, very cheap. Last forever. And you can have two or three of them with different palettes. I'm not say palette, I mean palette and array of different colours. As it was your palette, this is my palette, in the palette. Ron Ranson type of palette with just a couple of exceptions. Uh, right, okay. I will have to use the hairdryer on this quite a bit. Let's just clean the brush. I get a bit of. My phone's come back to life for some reason. I, I maybe just turned it on, but I've got all these messages queuing up. They're all made mostly Facebook on. Uh, right, let's just. Okay. Facebook and, and uh, on the uh, comments on uh, the work. If you haven't looked at my timeline on Facebook and you're interested in landscape painting, you can go back over four years, over four years of. Of um, my paintings, all in one place. I've put them. I've, I've put them. Well, you can go on Facebook and see them. So cl click onto photos, and you'll see the lot. But I've put them free on uh, on Patreon as well, because they're not. They're in the public domain anyway. So let's just get some of that in. Okay, a bit darker over the top. Because that's where I see the day. well. I mean, you can make up your own skies. A bit, a bit of red in there. It's going to cover a lot of this up. Right. Okay. Let's uh, put that to one side. Get the old hair dryer. You see, I don't need a hair dryer. But I do feel a 
paintings. Right, I'll just try to mute the sound. It won't cut out entirely. Now, I've, I've killed a bit of the brightness or the white gain. Let's you know? just take that down a little bit. Take that down a little bit. That's uh, pretty good. I can't, the yellow is almost gone. The raw sienna wash, that is almost dried in. But just give that slightly creamy effect behind the clouds. And that is looking pretty much like I painted it. That makes a change, doesn't it? Right, OK. Um, I'm going to do a... Uh, a path now um, because I'm right handed I tend to sweep that way so we'll get a bit of bit of that sky colour a bit, of, bit more red and just okay that's the basis of our path right okay now we're Uh, I'll, I'll just dry that so that I can crack on. Mute. I'll add a bit of dry brush to that later, but I want to get in some some uh, some trees and foliage. As if you're walking uh, through a country lane with lots going on, maybe I could uh, bring that path around there a little bit, but it'll be covered up. So I'm going to use another hake. I'm going to use Frank Clark's lovely hake. It's not. It's totally different from the Ron Manson. It's got a beveled edge, just slightly, whereas the Ron Manson one is dead straight, which is good for doing trees, impressionist trees. But I'm just going to use this for doing some nice foliage. Burnt sienna, cadmium yellow, pale. I've got it with the cadmium yellow medium as well. The uh, sienna's a little bit dry. So the last one I did was a uh, Oh, it's tied me that bit. Got a bit of blue in the back now, I think. I haven't used them for a couple of days, three days. I was just putting a bit of a bit of this and that in the background. Do. So that blue will give a bit of distance, an impression of distance. Bit of, uh, I've mixed a little bit of alizarin in with it. Have to be careful of splashing. Right, that'll do. So we'll have a bit of, bit of grassy green. Payne's grey and a bit of bit of cad yellow and a bit of, bit of sienna just an initial wash that's a little bit dirty but I think I prefer the cad yellow the ordinary cad yellow it's all dries lighter Don't leave too much sparkle, it'll look as if it's unfinished rather than deliberate. deliberate. Now some good rich dark in there. 
It's a burnt sienna. Burnt sienna and, and uh, Payne's. Payne's grey. Get some undergrowth here. It's a sort of a darkish green. Shadowy. Right, let's go to the other side while that dries off a little bit. I'm going to do something similar. Let's get that coming across here, closing, closing in a bit. There, as the paper gets dry, and it's being a rough paper, it's uh, tends to dry brush. You, you can't get enough wet. Into, the, into that rough surface, so you have to add the water. It's all about controlling the water in your brush. The hake is a wonderful instrument. Simple, cheap, but my goodness me, when you get used to it, it does all sorts of magical things. All right, let's just get a little bit of... I'll have the light coming from the left hake. And we can put some shadow in there. Right, let's get in some darker bits in here. Like a bank going up. See, look, just hitting and missing. Giving that, that dry brush, that spontaneous look. We can add some uh, branches in there or trunks or stuff, and we'll do some of the other side. Because I probably want some of that to uh, to creep over here. Paint's grey. So that's going to have more shadow in it. So let's put in a bit of a shadowy colour. I do like this hake. Good old Frank. He, I know he makes money out of it. Good luck. He's a lovely demonstrator. I love what he does. I don't think he's the greatest painter, but then nor am I. But he's a very entertaining character. Let's get that in there. But if you don't know Frankie, Frank Clark, he does acrylic and watercolour. And he's, he's a lovely Irishman. And he makes documentary uh, painting videos for, for Irish TV. And they're very, very lovely. They love you laughing, laughing your socks off. Other artists I follow, Steve Cronin, mostly. Not because I can learn anything, but because he's very entertaining as well. And I watch everything he does. I know we can put some uh, heavier stuff in here. Just a bit of texture. A bit of random stuff here and there. It's a little bit wet, but I want to get some shadow in here. Not too much, you don't have to lose all that light. Let's just get that sort of a wintry, autumn scene. <coughs> okay, and I think I, I should I'll just add to this foliage here. Get some sienna, some autumn colours. I think we might still be in autumn. Some of these trees in there. Okay. 
I'm not a great one really for copying photos. I think copying, like copying exacts, and when, you, when you're a beginner, you tend to rely on photographs. I, I mean, I did as well, and books. But you try with photographs, you, you, you think uh, it's complicated and, so, and you put all the complications in. In other words, it's there, so you must put it in your painting. And in the end, you do an exact copy of your painting. It doesn't look very nice. And it's craft rather than art. Art is creating atmosphere. Slightly abstract, maybe. I'm not denigrating uh, copying, exact copying. But as you progress, you will find ways to express your, your own individuality. And even though we might be painting similar landscapes, they'll be totally different. Yours will be as different from mine as mine are from Alan Owens. But we all we all do different things. It's when you try to copy what someone else has done, remember that they've done the selection for you. They've left out the detail or what they didn't consider important. Whereas the amateur view or way is to is to put it all in because it's there. But we're leaving out. We're just with this. I'm just creating an impression. I'll just give it a try. Okay, I've left some light on that side. This is the shadow side coming that way. So I'm going to enhance that a bit now. I'm going to go back to my, uh, what should I use? I'll carry on with Frank's so, brush. I want to get the darks in there, dark greens. Remember, it's all about the amount of water and in your brush. I want dark green, so plenty of paints grey in that. That'll make that sienna look a bit a bit brighter. Now, now we've got this uh, bushy stuff here. And we can we can get a shadow cast there. All right, okay, not much I want to do there. Let's get a bit of light in there. So let's use a bit of burnt sienna. That's nice and bright, and a bit of yellow. A bit of cad yellow. Got a rogue here then. The impressionist used uh, oh no, the phone's going now. The impressionist used uh, uh, photography. That's a little bit of uh, stuff here. Put a block on the end of that road. A bit, of, a bit of umber. Okay. Looks all a bit crowded, doesn't it? So I'm going to try that again because it's all running down the paging. Okay, I'm going to use the rigger now on one side anyway. Uh, I'll leave that to dry. Right, good, good dark is ultramarine and burnt umber. Plenty of water. I will have some little 
trees coming up here. I'm going to put some leaves on them, I think. Got a bit higher with one. I'll anchor that into that rough landscape. This is just the the rough bit now. Try not to be too calligraphic with it. Alright, that'll do it for some other little bits flicking up here and there. Oh, all sorts of twiggy stuff. It's a little bit of pain is growing in there. If I don't overdo this, I've probably overdone it anyway, but. Okay. I think we can go up a little bit higher with these. This one here is quite, quite a large. See, by the pressure on the brush, it can give you quite a quite a thick thick line I'm not worried about clumps of leaves in front it's a bit of an oak tree there an old English oak remember the branches come down as well as up The gnarled oak. Let's come up here with some of something. Oh, I believe that's a dry. Let's go on the other side now. Oh, let's get, oh, I'll have to do something there. You can always use a bit of bit of white. Nothing wrong with a bit of white gouache. I'll use it a bit. Not a lot. But it's there to be used and it can give you some lovely highlights, but don't overuse it. Otherwise it all becomes too too obvious. I hope some of you will have a look at my Patreon page. There's no commitment. See what it's all about if you haven't already. But I have got a rather lot of videos on there that you haven't seen that are private. I must have well over 250. Okay, let's just shuffle it up a little bit more. Hoping to do the uh, weekly bike ride along the River Wandle tomorrow. We don't do the whole river, we're too old. But we go along the Wandle and I'm always painting it or calling. Lee Turner on Facebook, he's a local photographer to me. He posted some gorgeous shots of the Wandle in Beddington Park. It's a is it Beddington Park? No, in Carshalton Park. 
no Peddington Park sorry Peddington Park one of my local parks and it's the, the river becomes a sort of a lake and then it splits and goes all over the place but we love it so I might basic some pictures on on his lovely lovely photography see I use photographs too but I don't copy them I just you make an impression but then I have been doing this for a long time and it's not been easy I I had I, I had this desire in my late teens to draw but it looks so easy but it isn't nothing's easy it's just worth it worth the effort although I don't do a lot of drawing I draw with a brush I'm a painter rather than a drawer I've, there are lots of gaps in my artistic career remember to taper Oh, no, no, no. Be all day otherwise. Right, I'm going to use the uh, the medium romance and hake for, for the photos, or shall I? Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep it simple. Get it wet. Take most of the moisture off. A good leaf cover. What colour will be burnt, burnt umber? A bit of blue. very gently this just dry brushing over over that there's a bit of sienna in there it's a bit of light sienna this is because the paper's rough it dry brushes very very nicely so let's just have some some sienna on there probably won't show up but i hope it does because that's facing the sun so now the other uh, the other side will be shadow. A touch of a touch of uh, paint spray. Now we'll have a bit of burnt sienna, a bit of a bit of umber over that. Yeah, that's nice. That's end of autumn, isn't it? Let's just put a little bit of the scenery stuff on there. Oh, just it's good an impression. Now we go on to the this side here. A little bit of dark. And I'll put some little fine branches in there. Okay, now a bit of dry brush in there. Oh no, he's very good at that. I'll get my ring lash on. I'll put a figure in. Okay, clean the brush. And we can put some little bits of shadow, just a bit slightly darker than the path. Don't overdo it. Just have little bits. So you've got to give him the shape to that bank. Shadows off. Okay. <coughs> right. Um, let's have a little bit of 
bit of shadow coming down that hill and ah. All right, that'll do. Okay, give that a... Sorry, folks, I forgot to unmute that blue thing. Right, okay, let's uh, say, well, I've just mixed a bit of light red and blue. Give a bit of shadow here. I've put... Uh, Sienna on the left side of these trees to give the, the unshadowed um, colour and I've gone slightly dark on the other on the shadow side. That's about all I've done really. I'm going to have to dry it off again and try and remember. Look, I've got unmute look and I still forget. Alright, okay, so I do apologize. Okay, now just like just put in a bit of a uh, bit of stuff up here, up here in these branches here. Just use the tip of this beautiful brush. It's one of Frank Clark's riggers. That's a lovely brush, absolutely one of the best I've ever had. Just a little bit of calligraphy, just to justify those clumps of leaves being there. Then more here. That's what I don't like. I don't mean to do that. Uh, looks like a catapult. I just better. This would be harder to do on a, a smoother, slicker paper, but using this brush, it's just just a joy. That that do some over here. Then we've got to put a figure in or two. Quite fine. Right, let's get a thicker brush. Uh, where's it gone? Where's it gone? This, right, let's uh, put a jolly. Now, we don't want the figures too big. If they're too big, I'll be able to scale with the with the trees, but I'm going to use uh, uh, well, let's use cad yellow and some light red. So it's sort of an orange. Oh, no, I can't do that. It's, it's too close in tone to that. I'm going to use burnt, sort of like a harder bit. That's a, He's right. I'll give his partner. Uh, too much water on the brush. Right, do that a bit, bit again. Right, shadow. Sometimes it's good to give them two legs. Oh, 
Okay, that'll do. It just brightens up that little little area there. Okay, a bird in the sky. Not too big. Signature. I'll put it in a mount. Uh, now what have we got here? We've got a lovely sky. I, 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 it's the sort of sky that is about it today without the blue. You've got those lovely light clouds, but with the lighter clouds behind. But I've shown a bit of blue to cheer it up, and it's made the whole painting look quite cheerful. I just wonder if I can... Uh, just brighten it up just a little bit okay all right a bit of masking tape on the top sorry about the the unmute but i only did it once in my news i do it two or three times uh all right uh, what's that one let's put that one there that is quite a cheery picture On the floor. Right, okay. okay, so there we are. We'll just take the camera up a bit. There's very little zoom on this uh, web, web Logitech webcam. But there we are. So it's a walk in the country. We've got this darker because the light, this area is in shadow. Catching a bit of light here. A lighter green there. Um, I don't want to overdo my trees. I've done it. That works because it's a rough paper. It's nothing worse than having a smoother paper and too much water on your brush because then it floods. But here we go. Uh, so remember that there's a lot of difference between the papers and you have to find one that you like. I usually use or was using the Fabriano 130 pound studio paper which is very good for wet in wet but uh, you, you'd struggle to get these sort of effects but it, because I paint a lot it's uh, it's cheap anyway I hope you enjoyed that folks thanks for watching goodbye